morning everybody, it's Brother Anthony. And today I wanted to get into Proverbs chapter 24, where we left off. I know it's been a while. Um, I don't have no excuse, just haven't barely been uh, wanting to make a video. You know, um, just been praising God every day. You know, keeping my faith lined up with His will for my life. You know, and I'm searching for my Bible that I always use, my New King James Version, and I can't find it. You know, I remember a while back, Pastor David had lost his Bible, and it was in a box. So I'm hoping <clears throat> my Bible is hidden in plain sight. But um, today I'm going to read from this Jack Van Imp Prophecy Bible. It's a King James Version, so it has the these and the thous, and I'm going to read after that the Living Bible Paraphrase, which gives it a better understanding, and we'll see where the Holy Spirit takes us. So it is about 6.32 a.m., we'll be taking the kids to school in a little bit, and let's get our day started. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this day. I want to thank you for this time that I get to wake up and, and read your word to your people, Lord God. I ask that uh, something gets uh, spoken that uh, that we can use, that we can apply to our lives, so that we can continue to walk worthy of our calling, so that we continue to find, so that we can continue to find our place in, in your will. And uh, continue to seek your face. We know that uh, the answer is Jesus. That if we don't have Jesus, then we don't have anything. And Lord God, I pray that, that everyone who watches this video opens their heart and their minds to the love that Jesus Christ has given them. And Father, we just continue to praise you. We thank you for your word, your living word. And we pray that it penetrates our hearts. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Oh, I got little Joshy eating his cereal behind me. Say hi, Josh. He's getting ready for school. Look at that big old bowl of cereal. Let's see? I don't like ugly. Clean up your mess, boy. Okay. Proverbs chapter 24. It says, Be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them. For their heart studieth instruction, and their lips talk of mischief. Through wisdom is, in house, is a house built, and by understanding it is established. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is strong, yea, a man of knowledge increases strength. For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war. And in multitude of counselors there is safety. Wisdom is too high for a fool. He openeth not his mouth in the gate. He that deviseth to do evil shall be called a mischievous person. The thought of foolishness is sin, and the scorner is an abomination to men. If thou not faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. If thou faint... In the day of adversity, thy strength is small. If thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death, and those that are ready to be slain. If thou sayest, Behold, we know it not, doth not he that pondereth the heart consider it? And he that keepeth thy soul, doth not he know it? And shall not he render to every man according to his works? My son, eat thou honey, because it is good and the honeycomb, which is sweet to thy taste. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul, when thou hast found it. Then there shall be a reward, and thy expectations shall not be cut off. Lay not wait, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous. Spoil not his resting place. For a just man falleth seven times, and riseth up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and not, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbles. 
lest the Lord see it, and it displease him, and he turn away his wrath from him. Fret not thyself because of evil men, neither be thou envious at the wicked. For there shall be no reward to the evil man. For there shall be no reward to the evil man, the candle of the wicked shall be put out. My son, fear thou the Lord and the king, and meddle not with them that are given to change. For their calamity shall rise suddenly, and who knoweth the ruin of them both? These things also belong to the wise. It is not good to have respect of persons in judgment. He that saith unto the wicked, Thou art righteous, him shall the people curse. Nations shall abhor him, but to them that rebuke him shall be delight, and a good blessing shall come upon them. Every man shall kiss his lips, that giveth a right answer. Prepare thy work without. Prepare thy work without, and make it fit for thyself in the field, and afterwards build thine house. Be not a witness against thy neighbor without cause, and deceive not with thy lips. Say not, I will do so to him as he hath done to me. I will render to the man according to his work. I went by the field of the slothful, and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding, and lo, it was all grown over with thorns and nettles, and nettles had covered the face thereof, and the stone wall thereof was broken down. Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. As you can see, uh, when the Bible was first uh, translated into English, it was really, really hard to speak back then. I don't know if I can speak with these and thous. Thou, my son Joshua, come hither. No, I just can't do it. So now I'm going to read it from the Living Bible. Let's see if questions for after. It says, Proverbs 24.1 Don't envy godless men. Don't even enjoy their company. For they spend their days plotting violence and cheating. Chew the mouth, please, please. Any enterprise is built by wise planning. Any enterprise is built by wise planning becomes strong through common sense and profits wonderfully by keeping abreast of the facts. A wise man is mightier than a strong man. Wisdom is mightier than strength. Well, don't go to war without wise guidance. There is safety in many counselors. Wisdom is too much for a rebel. He, he'll not be chosen as a counselor. To plan evil is as wrong as doing it. Wow. See that? To plan evil is just as wrong as doing it. So to have a mind set on doing bad things is the same is even worse than, than, than the action of doing it, you know. Verse 9. The rebel schemes are sinful, and the mocker is the scourge of all mankind. You are a poor specimen if you can't stand the pressure of adversity. You know, if you can't stand the pressure of adversity, then there's something that uh, needs to happen in your life. Or you need to start trusting in the Savior. You know, uh, I was wondering why my arm wasn't being healed. People were praying over it. You know, brothers were praying over it. And it's not, it wasn't getting healed. You know, and somebody said, you need to stop looking at the healing and start looking at the healer. You know, and when we go through adversity, we need to stop looking at at the act of being saved, but we need to start looking at the Savior. You know, start looking toward Jesus because He's the way, our way out. You know, just like when Peter was in that, got out of that boat and he started walking on that water. He said, "Lord, if it's really you, uh, com 
have me come to you. And he's like, come. And Peter started walking on the water. But when Peter looked around and saw the storm and took his eyes off Jesus, that those adverse times, that, uh, that stuff that he was going through, it started to make him sink, you know. And we need to keep our eyes focused on, on, on Jesus Christ. And it says here, you are a poor specimen if you can't stand the pressure of adversity. You know, and the only way we can stand up against that adversity is by having having our, our eyes and our heart focused on Jesus Christ. Verse 11. It says, rescue those who are unjustly sentenced to death. Don't stand back and let them die. Don't try to disclaim responsibility by saying you didn't know about it. For God knows. For God, who knows all hearts knows yours, and he knows you knew. And he will reward everyone according to his deeds. My son, <clears throat> honey whets the appetite, and so does wisdom. When you enjoy becoming wise, there is hope for you. A bright future lies ahead. <clears throat> See, Solomon's writing these proverbs to give us wisdom. To give us wisdom against evil people, against uh, adultery, against sinning, you know, all kind of sin. Uh, get your brush and your water bottle. Um, he's giving us warnings about uh, about not trusting in God, uh, the blessings that we get when we trust in God. You know, and, and all this wisdom is, is, is strengthening us. It says here that wisdom is better than strength. Where's it at? Wisdom is mightier than strength. You know, a wise man is mightier than a strong man. You know, and, uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna fight our way with our fists to get to heaven. We're gonna be wise and we're gonna make the right choices in life and accept Jesus Christ as our Savior and that's how we're gonna get to heaven. By having wisdom, not by fighting with our fists. It says, rescue those who are unjustly sentenced to death. Do not stand back and let them die. Don't try to disclaim responsibility by saying you didn't know about it. For God, who knows all hearts, knows yours, and he knows you knew. And he will reward everyone according to his deeds. Alright. I read this one, my, my son, honey whets the appetite, and so does wisdom. When you enjoy becoming wise, there is hope for you. A bright future lies ahead. O oh, evil man, leave the upright man alone, and quit trying to cheat him out of his rights. Don't you know that this good man, though you trip him up seven times, will each time rise again? But one calamity is enough to lay you low. Wow. And I, I apologize for stopping. I don't have the the life uh, lesson in this Bible. It's in my other Bible. So whenever something jumps out, I want I want to talk about it. So it says here, don't you know that uh, that this good man, the man who has wisdom, the man who who follows after Christ, the man who who uh, who turns away from sin, if he falls seven times, each time he'll get back up. But oh, you evil man. It'll take one calamity. It'll take one little stumble. It'll take one little incident. That when you fall, it will lay you flat. You will never get up. Verse 17. Do not rejoice when your enemy meets trouble. Let there be no gladness, gladness when he falls. For the Lord may displease may be displeased with you and stop punishing him. Don't envy the wicked. You know, hold on, I'm going to stop right there real quick. It says, don't rejoice when your enemy meets trouble. Okay, so, when someone is bothering us, and we pray that God will take matters into his hands, and stop the situation, or, 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 you know, Lord, just take over. We're not to sit here and laugh, be like, "Look at God's punishing you." Oh, you, you shouldn't have messed with me. God's punishing you because you messed with me, and I prayed about it. You know, when we ask God to take over, we let Him do His work. You know, and we move along. You know, we move out of the way, 
and let God take vengeance for his people. Verse 19 and 20, it says, Don't envy the wicked, don't covet his riches, for the evil man has no future, his light will be snuffed out. My son, watch your step before the Lord and the King, and don't associate with radicals, for you will go down with them to sudden disaster, and who knows where it all will end. It says, here are some additional Proverbs. It is wrong to sentence the poor and let the rich go free. He who says to the wicked, you are innocent, shall be cursed by many people of many nations. But blessings shall be showered on those who rebuke sin fearfully. It is an honor to receive a frank reply. Joshua, bring your water and your brush over here. Develop your business first before building your house. Don't testify spitefully against an innocent neighbor. Why lie about him? Don't say, now I can pay him back for all his meanness to me. Verse 30 and 31. It says, I walked by the field of a certain lazy fellow and saw that it was overgrown with thorns and covered with weeds and its walls were broken down. Then as I looked, I learned this lesson. A little extra sleep, a little more slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. Means that poverty will break in upon you suddenly like a robber and violently like a bandit. And what this means is, is even though, let's say... The, the encouraging videos that you watch on YouTube. Let's say they, they all stop. YouTube shuts down. But these are the only these are the only avenues of teaching that you uh, you know or you come across or anything that you understand. You know, and and let's say all that stuff shuts down. You have a Bible in front of you, but because that shuts down, you close this book. You close this book and you never read this book again because you have no one else to help you along when reading it. I'm coming here right now, baby. It is only then, I want you to, to, to realize that you cannot fully trust in us making these videos. You know, I always encourage you to read your Bible. Open up this book for yourself. Don't take one man's opinion. You can read this same chapter and gain so much more knowledge than what I was just talking about. You know, there's things in here that can apply to you. There's things in here that can apply to me. There's things in here that can apply to them. Josh, put your socks on right there. Sorry, I'm trying to make the video and get the child ready at the same time. So it says I what? what? Oh, because I spilled water. It says, I walked by the field of a certain lazy fellow and saw that it was overgrown with thorns and covered with weeds. You know, this is the importance of keeping God as the center of your life. You're going to revolve around him. He's going to be that orb in the middle, and your life is going to revolve around God. Your life's going to revolve around Jesus, around making the right choices in this life, about keeping yourself from from sinning, and when we take all that away, that's when our lives start getting overrun with thorns. <laughs> our walls start getting broken down. You know, robbers come in and steal stuff from us. You know, uh, we start getting a little lazier and a little lazier, and we end up broken. We end up in a place where we never thought we'd be because we thought that it was by Christ alone that could save us. Yeah, it is Christ alone that could save us, but he wants us to, to he wants us to, to read his word. He wants us to study his word. He wants us to find out our place in his kingdom. You know, I'm not saying that, that you won't make it to heaven if you don't read your Bible. You know, I don't want, I don't want to say that to anybody because there's, there probably is. There's people who 
before there even was a Bible that, that were are going to be in heaven. But we have this. We have these basic instructions before leaving earth. You know, the living basic instructions before leaving earth. You know, and, uh, and Christ wants you to get to know who he is and get to know your place in his kingdom. You know, these words were written many, many years ago, you know, and uh, before either of us were born. But I find myself in these verses all the time. And I'm going to read Hosea 10, 12. Because it talks talking about the lazy man in his field. And this verse ties right into it. And this was the... Breaking up the unplowed ground. If anybody remembers, that's what I said that the title of my book is going to be. Breaking the unplowed ground. So it says here in verse 12, Hosea 10, 12, it says, Plant the good seeds of righteousness and you will reap a crop of my love. Plow the hard ground of your hearts, for now it is time to seek the Lord, that he may come and shower salvation upon you. <clears throat> but the lazy man, I'm going to paraphrase this, paraphrase this from the paraphrase Bible. It says, but you have cultivated wickedness. And I'm going to add, but you lazy man have cultivated wickedness and raised a thriving crop of sin. You have earned the full reward of trusting in a lie, believing that military might and great armies can make a nation safe. You know, um, in Luke 9.62 it says, No man, having put his hand to the plow, and continuing to look back, is fit for the kingdom of God. So you see, once we start plowing that field with, and, and planting those seeds of righteousness, hope, peace, love, you know, love for Christ, love for God, all this stuff, we're, we're, we're building our, our, our field and we're filling it up with the love of Christ. And we're plowing our, our rows. And if we look back at our old life, our rows are going to be all crooked. Our, our place is going to be a mess, you know, that's when the evil one comes in and snatches up those seeds away, snatches up those blessings, you know, and I just encourage you today to don't be lazy, to get in your word, even when you don't see a video, get in your word, you know, like pastors David and Sharon, they are busy people, and it's okay for them not to post a video. It's okay because they are full-time ministry. They're doing so much for God's kingdom that they should get a break sometime. You know, but uh, not too much of a break. I don't want them to get lazy on us, but keep reading your word. Keep praying. Keep uplifting others. Keep building up your family. Keep at it. Because wisdom is greater than strength. I hope you guys have a blessed day. I'll see you guys next time. God bless.